all right? Find the volume of the shaded region bounded by the curve, blah, blah, blah. So this is the curve, right? This curve is not a normal curve, it's an ellipse. All right, all of us should be quite familiar with ellipse anyway. All right, and the line, blah, 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 blah. And uh, this is the, the area, the shaded area they're talking about, okay? And uh, what they want is rotate this about the y-axis, this way, okay? Y-axis. So first of all, have a visual of uh, how it looks like. Okay, not going to be easy to, to think about it. Okay, it's going to look a bit like this. So let me show you. Alright, uh, and you notice that when I plot the graph using the software, uh, it is actually divided into two parts. Alright, we'll talk about this later on as well. Okay, why are there two parts? Okay, because you, you cannot plot the whole ellipse together, right, even with your GC. Okay, so let's talk about the shape first. Alright, the thing that we are really interested in. Alright, so this is the... Uh, Hold on, uh, division 100, okay? 0 to, what is the intersection? Uh? Nobody knows yet, right? Because we haven't calculated. Uh. Right, let's assume it's 3, okay? So something like that. Alright, uh, so this is the area that uh, that's bounded, right? That, that's shaded, okay? And we want to find the volume. Okay? Uh, rotation about x equals 0, which is it. So this is it. Alright, so have a visual first. As every time you do a question, think about how it looks like, okay? So this is how it looks like. Okay, there's a lobang in between, which tells you that you need to find, you need to go and find a big volume minus away some parts that you don't want. Okay, so we we'll talk about this um, again. All right, but first of all, we all understand what we need to do first, right? Number one, we will die die need to go and find out what we call the the limits. Okay, so y equals to negative three x plus six. Okay, uh, at the same time, I I want to show you how you're supposed to show um, solve this. 6 minus y, 6 minus y over 3, so we put this into here, and then you have 9, 6 minus y over 3 minus 1 square plus y square equals to 9. Okay, so how do we solve this? Of course, we use, use our GC. So part of the graph will be something that is uh, more common, and I think most of you should know how to use it. Okay, so, so let's quickly do it to verify our answers. Da, 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 square yes okay and then plus x square okay minus 9 all right and then you go to your GC you graph it ah my GC looks a bit odd okay and uh, we will try to look for the x in the set okay the x in the set will be our y values here oh, so it's 0 and 3 Okay, yeah, so, so it's 0 and 3, it's not, not that hard, okay, but uh, we want to make sure, so we can use our GC for that. So y goes 0 and 3. So we get our limits, okay, 0 and 3. Now, uh, what we need to do is, of course, we need to find the volume that's bounded by the rate curve, okay? And what we say earlier on is that uh, when we want to rotate about y-axis, we make x squared the subject. Now, take a look at this. This is the equation of the curve, Okay? To make x square the subject is not something easy over here. Okay, I want to emphasize this. Huh? So pay attention first before you copy. All right, copying is not that important. All right, but pay attention. Making y, uh, making x square the subject. All right. So you say, Mister, okay, what? Like that, and divide throughout by nine. Like that. Oh shoot! I need x square, but this is x minus one square. So what do you need to do? I need to square root first, right? Okay, so uh, we square root both sides and we have x minus 1 equals to plus minus the square root of this. And of course, x then looks like 1 plus minus square root of this. Agree on? Then you go like, oh, oh. What is this? Right, doesn't it look odd? Okay, so what it means is this, not what you mean by plus minus, okay? You need to understand this thing called the ellipse and circle or whatever, right? Your ellipse or circle always has got an x square or y square, an x square and y square in the equation, okay? When you make x square the subject, what it does is that it divides the curve into two parts, two halves. There's a left half and there's a right half, okay? So the equation, let me just write here, x equals to 1 plus this is referring to the right hemisphere 
the right half of the ellipse. Okay, and of course the the other version. All right, which is the negative root is referring to the left <coughs> half of the ellipse. Now why is this important? Because now I need x squared as the subject, right? So I need to x square it. Okay, so x squared now I suddenly got two. You see, if I um, basically I don't need to do this, right? I just have to square it ah, like that. So I, now I have two. Which one should I use to go and do the integration? Because if you choose the wrong one, let's say you chose this one and you go and do the integration with this x squared, you end up with this area being bounded by this part of the curve being rotated and you actually get this. Agree? Yeah? Okay? Of course, if you choose the right side of things, then you end up with. Hmm. Okay, let me show you. <laughs> I should not try to draw sometimes, okay? So if, it, if you choose the wrong version, let me get rid of this as well. A, like I said, there's a green curve and a red curve. Huh? So if you choose the right side and you found the area from 0 to 3, sorry, I still have to go through this because that's the how things work here. Uh, you actually get this. And if you go and find the volume, ah, you actually get this piece of solid here. Agree? Okay, ah, so, so it is important that you choose the right equation, agree? Huh? Because if you choose the wrong one, you end up with this one. 100. Ah, okay, and you can imagine the volume will look very different, right? Agree? Huh? Ah, so, so this is why I want to go through this example. Um, because I think this example has got something interesting to learn, and that's this part here. Okay, so just remember, okay, uh, when you make x squared a subject, Okay, you divide your circle or ellipse into left half and right half. Okay, how do you decide? Positive root is always the right side. Negative root is the left side. Okay. Similarly, if you attempt to go and make y square the subject, that means to say you go and make y the subject instead. Okay. You will divide the circle or the ellipse into two halves as well. But this time around will be the top half or the bottom half. So it's a matter of top, bottom or left, right. So you must... Uh, do know the right thing and choose the right thing to go and integrate. Understand? Right? Okay, so in this situation that we are in, we are looking for this portion, so we are actually interested in this one, right? Okay, so now we can do the integration. Come quickly, let, let me show you the hard things to, you need to do, okay? Uh, the line too, well, the line is actually this line, so we need to make x squared the subject. So we are going to rotate about uh, y axis, right? So the integration looks a bit like this pi, okay, 0 to 3. And I know I'm going to integrate dy, correct? Okay, and when I integrate dy, I'm going to make x square subject. So the x square is this one. Square. Okay, minus away the line. And the line, I'm yeah, making x square subject, is not difficult at all. Huh? It's only 6 minus y over 3 squared. Okay, so this is the integration that you have to work out in order to solve this question, this volume question, okay? And once you are able to form this, and this is important because if you can't even form this, you can't do anything, right? So this is important step, very, very important step is to be able to form this out. So you know what exactly you need to integrate. So this is the monster you need to go and solve. You need to go and integrate this, okay? And of course, what comes after this will be your techniques of integration. How well you learn your techniques, right? How do you integrate this, okay? So how, anyone? Type into GC, you won't get exact. Did the question ask for exact anyway? No. Okay, good. Good idea. Fantastic, right? If the question never asked for exact, you just use your GC. Okay? But if the question asks for exact, then you've got to think of ways to do this. Okay? And uh, I think this is not easy, so I'm going to skip this. Alright? Because uh, first, I think you expand, and inside this, you probably have to use substitution. Okay? This square root sign, you've got to use substitution. Probably you let y be sine x. Ah, then you have uh, 3 sine x. Then you have uh, 1 minus sine x, sine square x inside. Uh, then it's a substitution question uh, eventually okay so it will degenerate to become something to do with uh, substitution okay but anyway we're not going to uh, do that we're going to show we're going to use our gc okay and i'm quite sure you are familiar yes no okay so this is what you can do all right let me clear up all this nonsense first okay so you go to your gc you put in the pi hey, should suddenly cannot find pi okay pi and then you go to your math and then you go to n a finite integration Okay, yep, and then put in 0, and put in 3, 
And uh, you put in this, whatever you see up here. Okay? Ah, 8.52 blah blah blah. Okay? Can? So, so we can uh, 8.52, I think that, that should be sufficient for us. Okay, we can actually try to verify the answer to, to make sure that we didn't get anything wrong. But you'll be surprised, you know, because uh, this, you think that uh, using a computer is more accurate. <laughs> i show you something interesting. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's find the volume. The volume is two point over here, right at the lower left corner. Can you can you see? It's a bit low. It's a bit small as well here. Two point seven one one pi. Okay. So is it the same value as what we got? Close, right? Two point seven one one pi. Right, hold on. Two point seven one one pi. Agree. That was what we got. Yeah, close, huh? But not that close, okay? So, uh, who is more accurate, you think? Which one? The first answer or the second answer? The first one is more accurate, okay? Why? Why we use the software, use the computer is worse off. Because the computer only 100 Yes, correct, okay? Because when I set this up, I put 100 division, remember? Yeah, and, and that, that's the problem because they really calculate each uh, division and then, okay? So, so, so that's the thing about software.